Fox 59 investigates it's a controversial trial run at IPS. The district bans flavored milk. The debate, what's the healthiest for Indiana's children? The district says the ban cuts down on the amount of sugar, but some say our students need the calcium. Fox 59's Kent Erdahl has both sides of the debate right now and what it means for your children. Kent? Well, it's not quite a complete ban. There's banning of strawberry and vanilla milk and chocolate milk in the mornings. They're still allowing chocolate milk in the afternoon, but it's certainly something that's controversial among some of those in the healthcare field. There's no debating what the most popular drink is in IPS cafeterias. Studies have shown chocolate milk and other flavored versions account for at least 70% of milk consumed in schools. But beginning in August, that will change. I just think we're trying to make healthier options. IPS Commissioner Andrea Roof is the force behind removing flavored milks from the menu. And this week, the IPS board agreed to a three-month trial. We do have an obesity problem in Indianapolis. If a child chooses chocolate milk at breakfast and lunch, that's an additional six teaspoons of sugar a day. So that could be eight pounds of fat that they gain a year. We're surrounding kids with sugar they don't need. And so what we do is we're training them to have a sweet tooth. Pediatrician Dr. William Fisher helped lobby for the change. Flavored milks at IPS have twice the sugar as white milk, but there are a number of dietitians who are against the change, saying the benefits of flavored milk still far outweigh the bad. It's a great uh, food, it's nutrient dense, and even if it does have some added sugar to it, added to it, I still think it's a good thing for our students to be having on a regular basis. I'd rather them have a little sugar and drink their milk than not drink their milk. <laughs> Terry McIntyre says she's seen it happen with her kids and there are some numbers to back that up. A study sponsored by the Dairy Council in 49 elementary schools that removed flavored milk found a 26% drop in milk sales and an 11% spike in milk thrown away, resulting in 37% less milk consumed. The IPS board will monitor milk consumption over the next three months before making a final decision. Eventually, after a couple weeks of boredom, they're going to say, well, white milk's not that bad. I just think you've got to give it enough time for the kids to get a new normal. I think the kids will throw more milk away than they drink. Because at least they drink the chocolate and the strawberry. They don't drink the white. It will be interesting to see what happens, you guys. You can still bring the flavored milk in your lunch. And, of course, at lunchtime only, they'll allow fat-free chocolate milk. Mm. Mm. Which begs the question, what about sodas? I mean, those are not part of the equation at all, right? No. Right now, during lunch, there's no alternative to milk. It's water or milk. Mm. And at breakfast, kids can have the option of choosing orange juice. Mm. Mm. It'll be interesting to see how the students respond to it. Yeah, and this is one of those yeah. uh, one of those issues that I think is going to be very yes. uh, polarizing on both sides of that. Kent, thanks a lot. Thanks, Kent. We actually wanted to know your thoughts on this decision. There is an intense mm -hmm. debate going on right now on our Facebook page. A lot of you really don't like this change. Yeah, let's give you a few here. Uh, Aaron Renee Weir says, at least there are still some benefits to drinking these milks, whereas most of the high calorie foods sold have little to no benefits. But people like Christy Smith disagree. She says, it's a fantastic idea. Juice too. Water is fine or sugar free juices. While they're at it, how about real meals instead of plastic wrapped and reheated crap? That's what she said. You can log on to our Facebook page, let us know what you think, and read some of the other comments. No doubt that controversy and debate will continue.